Hello, I'm Megan Lazovic, Vice President from Edison Research. And I'm Lamar Johnson, VP of Sponsorship Marketing at NPR. And today we'll be presenting the third annual Spoken Word Audio Report from NPR and Edison Research. I'm excited to represent NPR as we delve into how our favorite medium is growing. We'll also highlight how young and multicultural listeners are consuming spoken word content at rates never recorded before. We encourage you to share what you learned today. And if you do, please use the hashtag spoken word audio. And you can ask questions throughout this presentation in the Q&A box. We have people standing by to help. Or if you are watching the replay of this webinar, please reach out to us at info at edisonresearch.com with your questions. NPR has been producing award-winning audio for over 50 years and is committed to providing the best in audio across platforms, from radio to podcasts to smart speakers and beyond. The demography of this country has been changing, which means the listening audience has been changing as well. And with a continued commitment to amplify programs with diverse viewpoints, we're excited to bring more diverse audiences to spoken word audio. Today, we'll report on some of the changes we've seen. The spoken word audio report draws from a number of studies. First, we pulled from Edison Research's Share of Ear, a quarterly report where we ask a nationally representative sample of Americans to keep a detailed one-day diary of their audio usage. Since we've been conducting Share of Ear since 2014, we are able to observe the growth in spoken word audio over that time. For the past three years, NPR and Edison Research have fielded a supplemental national survey with spoken word audio listeners. This study helps us understand the changing attitudes and motivations of spoken word audio listeners. Finally, while survey data certainly helps paint a picture of Americans' listening habits, we find that speaking to listeners directly is the best way to understand why Americans are spending more time with spoken word audio than ever before. We conducted one-on-one -on -one interviews with spoken word audio listeners that will highlight some of the most powerful aspects of spoken word audio content available today. And we have a lot of great insights to share with you today, but we'll hit you with the highlights up front. Spoken words share of audio listening has increased by 40% over the last seven years. That includes an increase of 8% in just the past year. And that growth is driven largely in part by new audiences, especially younger listeners and multicultural audiences, which includes Black, Hispanic, and Asian listeners. While most listeners cite the ability to multitask, one of the main motivations for spoken word audio listening, young and multicultural audiences are more likely to cite other reasons such as connection, education, new perspectives, and self-improvement. Let's start by documenting that growth in listening. How do we document that growth? Well, our Share of Your Diary study asks panelists to record their listening to any type of audio. That could be music, news, sports, talk and personalities, or audiobooks. Anything that is not music is classified as spoken word audio. And a lot of Americans listen to spoken word audio. In our survey, 75% of people age 18 and older in the U.S. said that they listened to spoken word audio in the past month. And there are substantial numbers of people listening to spoken word audio every day. In 2021, 45% of the U.S. population reported listening to spoken word audio on their diary day. That's up from 43% in 2020. That's pretty close to a majority of people listening to spoken word. As more and more people bring audio into their daily routines, marketers should be thinking about how they're incorporating audio into their strategies. That 45% of Americans translates to about 127 million daily listeners in the US today. But look at what we recorded in 2014. Back then the US had 105 million daily listeners. It's grown pretty steadily over time and overall. In just seven years, there are an estimated 22 million more people listening to spoken word audio in the US. That is incredible growth. We can look at that growth of spoken word audio from another angle. 
This time, let's focus on the amount of time people spend listening. In 2014, 20% of the time spent with any type of audio went to spoken word audio. 80% of time with audio went to listening to music. But look at how the time is divided in more recent years. The share of time spent with spoken word has risen consistently and is currently 28% of all audio listening time. And that's how we came up with one of the key findings we shared with you earlier. We've dropped that finding here in a nice big font so you can't miss it. Spoken words share of audio listening has increased by 40% over the last seven years and 8% in the last year. Screenshot this, share it on your socials if you like. It's incredible how year after year we are able to document this growth. While we're seeing growth in listening across many demographics, there are some groups of listeners that have especially high increases in time spent with spoken word. Here is the growth by men and women. On the left, we see share for Americans 13 and older. To the right of that, we see share by men has gone from 26% in 2014 to 32% in 2021. That's a 23% increase. For women, the jump is much more pronounced. Women's share was 14% in 2014 and is 24% today. That's a 71% increase in share among women. When we look at age, we see the youngest listeners are the ones who have shown the largest gain in share since 2014. This graph shows that spoken word was only 12% for those age 13 to 34 in 2014, but that has grown to 26% of their time today. That's an incredible 116% growth in share for spoken word among those age 13 to 34 in the past seven years. And if you are curious, it was 18% growth in just the last year. And we'll look at this growth one more time, this time by ethnicity. Americans who are white or otherwise not African-American nor Latino went from 23% to 29%. To the right of them, we have African-Americans at 12% in 2014 and 22% in 2021. That's an 83% increase in share for African-American listeners. And finally, on the right, Hispanic and Latino went from 15% to 27%. That's an 80% increase for Hispanic and Latino listeners. We've summarized some of the findings you've just seen in this overall growth recap page. It will be available to download after this webinar. But the key things to remember about spoken word audio's growth are, one, the growth has been consistent. Two, young listeners are a major factor in growth. And three, multicultural listeners are a major factor in growth. And because our listening data told us that young and multicultural audiences were especially important to the medium, we decided to focus on those types of listeners in our remote in-depth interviews. And one of the topics that resonated with this audience is that spoken word audio offers new perspectives. There are curious listeners who are often seeking new points of view. Here's what they had to say on the subject. When I'm listening to someone talk, I'm hearing someone's stories. I'm hearing how their stories interact with my stories. I'm hearing sort of an opinion or a narrative that's different. And I really like the idea of seeing things from different sort of perspectives. It definitely provides different perspectives than you would otherwise hear in um social media or mainstream news channels, which can be definitely a lot more biased. I don't know. Uh, that's how I feel. And I mean, there's a lot of negativity also in social media and uh, just things portrayed differently. I am really like to be open-minded. So I like to know more about what, not just what's my bubble, me being um, Mexican-American living in California, I want to know about, you know, different parts of the world, country, different things like that. So it provides a perspective that I wouldn't have found anywhere else. Young and multicultural audiences are recognizing that spoken word audio can provide perspectives they are not finding elsewhere. We know that some of the growth of spoken word audio comes from time with music, but some of that time is from other media 
as more people discover what spoken word audio has to offer. Among current spoken word audio listeners, 51% say they are listening to spoken word audio more compared to five years ago. When we look at the age breaks, we see a large contrast between young and older listeners. 66% of spoken word audio listeners aged 18 to 34 say they are listening more compared to five years ago. A good portion of this group were teenagers five years ago, so it makes sense that they've aged into the content. But it's still a good indicator for just how much spoken word audio's audience is changing. And the multicultural audience which on average is a younger population, is more likely to report an increase in listening to spoken word audio compared to five years ago. 59% of multicultural listeners say they are listening more versus 48% of white listeners. While we are on the subject of listening more, we should give a nod to those loyal listeners who are listening to a lot more of spoken word audio than the average spoken word listener. I'm talking about daily listeners the 45% of the U.S. population who reported listening to spoken word every day. Daily spoken word audio listeners are spending an average of two hours and six minutes of spoken word audio consumption per day. It turns out the listening habits of daily spoken word audio listeners are much different than the habits of the total population. Right. Daily spoken word audio listeners are spending a lot more time with spoken word audio than the general population. Even back when Share of Ear first recorded it in 2014. Back then, among daily listeners, 43% of their listening time was spent with spoken word audio and 57% went to music. That's a lot of time with spoken word. And yet, even that increased among daily listeners. Today, 50% of the daily spoken word audio listeners listening time goes to spoken word audio and 50% of their time goes to music. Their days are split evenly between the two formats. And keep in mind, we showed you earlier how the number of spoken word listeners has grown by millions of listeners since 2014. So that's a lot more people who are spending more of their audio time with spoken word so that equals a lot more hours of spoken word audio consumption. At NPR, we're working on a number of daily podcasts from news to arts and culture to business and economics in response to this growing appetite for daily listening. Now, while some might think of spoken word audio for telling stories about the world around us, our qualitative research pointed out that spoken word audio can provide an inward view. Listeners have noted how spoken word audio has become an important tool for everything from mental health to self-improvement. For our motivation and encouragement, it kind of helps me understand more about how to be more successful and try to be more financially well off. So some of the contents I listen to are, are more based upon that. So it kind of gives me a sense of not giving up. So. I went through a lot of mental trauma growing up. So being able to use that, what I learned from a podcast and use it against my own trauma is super helpful and advantageous for myself. You, you hear other people, you know, call in and someone who has a similar problem, you know, gives you an idea to try, you know, that you can apply to your situation or whatever. You have to seek out like what's out there, right? For for you to like take advantage of, like you can't just uh, live in a bubble and expect that the problem will just kind of go away. So I think it allows me to acknowledge the problems that I have and know that there is or one or more solutions for it. And I just have to seek out and get out of my comfort zone and try to uh, learn from that and implement uh, that to to better myself and yeah that's kind of how it helps me navigate the problems you would always want to improve yourself and better yourself um or being able to know how to handle situations as a mom with your kids i can take things from each podcast that can help me become a better mom or be a better girlfriend or eventually be a good wife so that's why i like to listen or that's what I get from listening to those podcasts. I try to give off good energy um, just because, you know, energy is really important to me. 
especially within yourself. And if your energy is not good or if it's, you know, bad and you're kind of spreading that to others, you know? Um, so I do my best to keep my energy and my aura good. That way, when I do encounter other people, that spreads good off to them. Um, so that's one reason why I really like to listen to spoken word or an audio, um, just so I can improve my positivity within myself that way and it'll spread to others. Another factor in the changing audio landscape is digital listening. And digital has served the spoken word audio world well. Podcasts, of course, are one of the fastest growing digital platforms. According to the Infinite Dial from Edison Research and Triton Digital, podcast listening hit an all-time high in 2021. 57% of Americans have listened to a podcast. As a leader in audio, NPR certainly has contributed to growing a podcast fan base. 28% of time spent listening to podcasts was with NPR and public radio in 2021. Despite a growing field of competitors, NPR has remained a leader in the field. Let's broaden our focus a little bit. How does growth in digital formats change the distribution of spoken word audio listening across all platforms? Here's a look at how listening has changed over time. In 2014, 79% of the time spent listening to spoken word audio was with AM FM radio, and 8% of time was spent with podcasts. 13% of time was with other platforms such as streaming audio, Sirius XM radio, or audiobooks. Now we will direct our attention on the biggest player when it comes to time spent listening to spoken word audio, AM FM radio. I should note that the bars for AM FM radio include both over the air and streams of AM FM stations. Those streams are a very small piece of that listening. The portion of spoken word that comes from AM FM, which might include talk radio, news, sports talk, and sports play-by-play, -play, radio morning shows, and other forms went from 79% of all spoken word audio in 2014. By 2017, it had dropped to 66%. And as of our 2021 report, 48% of time spent with spoken word is from AM FM radio. Over time, we do see that radio is losing some time to its digital competitors. However, it is still by far the platform with the most time spent listening to spoken word audio. Now let's focus on podcasts. I'll again point out that in 2014, 8% of time spent with spoken word audio was from podcast listening. It jumped to double digit share in 2015, then a large jump in 2017 to 15% share and 19% last year. Today, 22% of all time listening to spoken word audio goes to podcasts. So over time, we see the share of time spent with spoken word audio via podcasts has grown from 8% to 22% of listening. Let's do the math so you understand just how incredible that increase is. Podcasts share of time with spoken word audio has increased by 176% over the past seven years and 16% in just one year. From the infinite dial study, we knew that podcast listening was growing every year. But when you look at it by its share of listening among spoken word audio, its growth is just jaw dropping. Here's a slide that might also make your jaw drop. Mobile listening is growing at an amazing pace too. And it's an interesting category to focus on because there is growth across all ages. In this graph, we see on the left, 9% of time spent with spoken word audio was through a mobile device back in 2014 for Americans age 13 plus, And it grew to 34% of time in 2021. Then to the right, we see it across from the three age groups. Americans aged 13 to 34 were already pretty mobile back in 2014. Their listening on mobile has grown from 19% in 2014 to 51% today. We see similar growth stories in the other age categories as well. Age 35 to 54 went from 12% to 38%. And for those age 55 and older, it grew from 2% to 18%. A key point is mobile consumption is growing across all ages. 
Another key point is this. The share of time listening to spoken word audio on a mobile device increased by 278% over the past seven years. Today, 35% of all daily mobile listening is spoken word audio. When we look at the spoken word versus music breakdown on other devices, we see that spoken word does best on mobile. Second is AM FM radio. 29% of time with audio on the radio goes to spoken word audio. Computer and smart speakers are not too far behind. This recap slide will be available in our download, but it's here to remind you of two main points. Podcast listening is a major factor in spoken word audio's growth, and mobile listening is a major factor in spoken word audio's growth as well. Finding content that appeals to you certainly contributes to listening growth. So let's learn more about content discovery. We'll also learn just how engaged some of the growing audiences are with spoken word audio. We asked our monthly listeners how they find out about spoken word audio. Searching the internet was at the top of the list with 59% of the respondents citing it as a resource. And 51% said they find out about spoken word audio through recommendations from friends and family. Social media posts come in at 44%. Video-based apps or websites such as YouTube or Twitch are a source for 42% of monthly listeners. And we'll have more about that in a minute. Recommendations from AM FM radio stations come in at 37%. Recommendations from other audio hosts at 30%. While this list might be helpful if you are looking to spread the word about your show, it gets even more interesting when you look at discovery sources by age and race, because use of these sources came in at a higher percent among both young and multicultural audiences. They are more actively seeking out new content. Spoken word audio listeners aged 18 to 34 use an average of six discovery sources, while those age 55 and older use an average of two. Multicultural audiences used an average of five sources, averaging one more source than white audiences at four. And young and multicultural audiences were more likely to use video for discovery. While 42% of monthly listeners used video sources such as YouTube or Twitch for spoken word audio discovery, which is pretty high in the list, it is a more important resource for young people. 58% of spoken word monthly listeners aged 18 to 34 use video for discovery. And look at white listeners versus multicultural audiences. The percent of those from diverse backgrounds who use video for discovery is 20 points higher than the percent of usage among white listeners. And what are people listening to? Here are the spoken word audio topics that our monthly listeners said they ever listened to. This full list will be available to download and review, but I'll point out the top three topics. News and information is 56%, followed by music at 55%, and comedy at 47%. And just like when we look at discovery sources, we saw that young and multicultural audiences were more likely to report listening to almost all of these topics. Their interests are varied and more likely to explore new topics. Monthly listeners reported listening to an average of 10 topics on this list, while those aged 18 to 34 averaged 13. White listeners averaged nine topics and multicultural audiences averaged 12. We asked this same question in 2019 so we're able to see how listening in each of these categories has changed over the past year. Topics that have decreased since 2019 are travel, history, and biography. COVID restrictions certainly did not help the travel industry. Topics that have increased since 2019 are romance, games and hobbies, celebrities and gossip, children's, fantasy sci-fi, true crime, and drama. Did these categories have new hit podcasts driving the increase? Perhaps some of them did, but the listeners play a part. Every single topic on this list over indexes among ages 18 to 34 and multicultural listeners. 
This just shows us how growing categories of listeners are creating change in the world of spoken word. 54% of monthly spoken word audio listeners agreed with the statement, spoken word audio engages your mind in a more positive way than other media. Listeners aged 18 to 34 were even more likely to agree with the statement at 62%. And 63% of multicultural listeners agreed with the statement. These listeners are especially engaged with spoken word content in a very positive way. 58% of monthly spoken word audio listeners agreed with the statement, spoken word audio is made for people like you. Multicultural respondents were even more likely to agree with the statement at 66%. Spoken word audio is doing a good job at delivering content for people that feels made for them. Allowing listeners to feel included is a powerful way to strengthen their ties to your program. It's cool to see just how receptive engaged and connected listeners are to ads on spoken word audio. We asked monthly spoken word listeners, how often do you notice ads or sponsorships on spoken word audio? 22% answered frequently, 57% answered sometimes, and 21% said never. But look at age 18 to 34. 31% said frequently, 59% answered sometimes, and only 10% said never. Multicultural audiences notice ads more often than the average monthly listener, as well at 28% frequently and 58% sometimes. Once again, we'll have this recap available for download, but here are the three things to remember about spoken word audio discovery and engagement. Young and multicultural audiences are especially engaged. The new listeners are changing the landscape of listening and more engaged audiences are more tuned into ads. The final topic we'll explore is motivations for listening to spoken word audio. Now you've heard about some of these already, new perspectives and self-improvement, but we have a whole list of other items to explore. 58% of monthly spoken word audio listeners agreed with the statement, spoken word audio is a productive use of your time. Listeners aged, 18 to 54 were more likely than those age 55 and older to agree with the statement. Multicultural audiences are more likely than whites to agree with the statement as well. But still, the majority of monthly listeners like to feel productive. In fact, multitasking was a topic often brought up in our in-depth interviews. So I do everything <laughs> while listening. So um, working out, um, working, cleaning, um, I have a pool in the backyard that I maintain. So doing backyard maintenance, I'll pop on headphones and listen to the backyard. And it kind of takes uh, my mind off of what I'm doing at the moment. So yeah, definitely a lot of the, the kitchen work, uh, meal prepping or cooking breakfast, uh, whatever. I work, I'll swim, um, really anything. Working, driving cooking and washing dishes i'm mopping i'm sweeping like for me like i always been like um like an anxious person so i always need something running in the back of like you know to keep my mind focused on something that's actually my biggest reason for ever getting into audio or spoken word stuff to begin with it was because i wanted to do more reading but i didn't want to waste time reading and so when I, when I started to listen to things, um, I was able to drive and do things. I was able to walk and do things. I was able to, you know, like when I was training for my first marathon, I listened to this Swedish crime novel, like series, you know, because they were so long and I could just run for hours and listen to the books and be distracted by the story and not like the pain in my knee or whatever. I really started picking it up when my life became like, more hectic and I just didn't have time to just sit down and relax and like just watch something like I used to like binge a series on Netflix for example um I just needed to like become a better multitasker essentially so like part of that I didn't want to like lose like my joy of like my hobbies or like listening to things or like watching watching things I didn't want to like lose that but it was hard to just sit down and have the time to like you know like me time essentially 
And sometimes I don't want my me time to be like just watching something. I feel like it makes me feel like I'm wasting time, especially as a mom. I'm just like, I have to be doing something. <laughs> and I used to have more time to read like actual books, you know, page by page and have more time to watch TV documentaries and all that stuff or with kids. I feel like I have to squeeze it into my life one way or the other. Like that's why I have my AirPods on and I'm like doing things or I'm playing, I'm doing arts and crafts with them or eating and I'm like trying to be present while I'm listening to it. They don't really notice that I'm listening to it, you know, but I'm still giving them attention and still trying to get my me time. In our survey, multitasking topped the list of reasons for listening to spoken word audio among monthly listeners. 71% said they like to listen while doing something else. And just like we did before, we'll point out that young and multicultural listeners agreed with more of these items. This slide shows the index among those age 18 to 34 compared to the total. That black vertical line is situated at the average and the top horizontal bar represents 18 to 34 year olds who agreed that the ability to multitask is a reason they listen to spoken word audio compared to the total. You can see they index about three points below the average at 97. But for every single other item on this list, they index above the average. And here is the index among multicultural spoken word audio listeners. They are just as likely as other listeners to say they used spoken word audio for multitasking. But again, they over-index in every single other item on the list. There was one thing that didn't make the list of reasons question that came out in our interviews, perhaps because it's the sum of many of the items on that list. Listeners told us how important spoken word audio was to them for its ability to make them feel a connection, especially for young listeners living through a pandemic, communicating through social media, Spoken word audio provides meaningful conversations in a digital world. I guess I used to only like listen to music, but now I think I listen to people talk more because I think it's probably like a side effect of endemic. You just want that like more human connection, I guess. I'm kind of a little bit isolated because I don't go out too much outside of like work and stuff. So it's kind of a way to like keep me, um, keep me like connected to the outside world and like know what's going on without like, knowing like going myself out there it, it makes it sound like, like there's people around you like as if like you're kind of like sitting at a restaurant or or you're sitting at some kind of a st- local establishment and you're just kind of having a meal or you might be doing something and just people around you are talking so you just listen in on, on what's kind of being discussed so i get a haircut every other week um so it's kind of like being at the barber shop where you're just relaxing with the guys and everyone in the shop and just kind of talking about whatever. Like I drive by myself a lot and I'm in my room alone a lot. So I'm like, yeah, I just hate like just hearing the AC. So yeah, I'll just throw on a podcast. When I start listening a podcast, I feel like, okay, um, people like me are talking about and I can be also part of it they kind of reiterate like you know like you're not the only one um and they encourage they encourage moms out there like it's okay like it we go through it too so I think just that reassurance of that there's actually other people out there that are going through the same thing as me a lot of the times it feels like your friend is talking to you you know and like at a deeper level than most people talk to their friends you know it's just it's weird. Like we live in this really weird, like surface society and you kind of don't want to pry because you don't want to be that person that's crying, but also you don't want to like have like dumb conversations about nothing, about things that don't matter. Like I, I'm in this weird, I, I, I'm in that place right now, like where I'm like, I don't like, like talking to my friends and just giving me a rundown of what you, what you're doing isn't like what I'm looking for, you know? I can't stand watching TV or movies, especially like new movies and tv shows because i feel like it's so like on the surface and mass produced and it's like trying to get to so many audiences that it's not fine-tuned to any real subject you know or meaningful it's not very meaningful 
So that's why I just listen to people talk personally because it's more interesting to me. While spoken word may just be a one-sided conversation, listeners are finding deep, meaningful connections. But spoken word can also connect you with the people around you. 51% of monthly spoken word audio listeners say they listen to spoken word audio with other people. Those aged 18 to 34 are even more likely to listen with friends or with family at 64%. And 61% of multicultural audiences listen to spoken word audio with others. It's clear that spoken word audio hits many aspects of the lives of listeners. 45% agree with the statement, spoken word audio is becoming a more important part of your life. Those aged 35 to 54 agreed the most with this statement at 58%. But spoken word audio is especially important in the lives of segments of listeners who are increasingly important to spoken word itself. 52% of age 18 to 34, and 55% of multicultural listeners said it is becoming more important to them. We know your time is important to you, and we thank you for sharing that time with us today. While there is a lot to take away, we'll review again a few key points. Spoken words share of audio listening has increased by 40% over the last seven years and has increased by 8% in just one year. Spoken word audio's growth is driven by large increases in young and multicultural audiences. While most listeners cite the ability to multitask as one of the main motivations for spoken word audio listening, young and multicultural audiences are more likely to cite other reasons, such as connection, education, new perspectives, and self-improvement. This marks the third year of Edison Research and NPR's partnership to bring you the Spoken Word Audio Report. It has been a pleasure to explore the topic of spoken word audio in new ways every year. Please tell us what you'd like to know next. And please visit npr.org slash spoken word audio for previous, current, and future spoken word audio reports. The slides and videos you saw today are available on the site. And special thanks to everyone who helped prepare this report and webinar at Edison Research and National Public Media. And if you are watching live today, happy Veterans Day. Hi, Dad. Thanks for watching and thanks for your service.